One of the most exciting things about GSAP 3 is the all new Motion Path plugin, which replaces Bezier plugin. And it's not in the core, so we just load it and then all we have to do is register the plugin one time. And then from that point on, all we need to do is uh, in our animations, just say Motion Path, and we'll give it, we'll point it to an ID of an SVG path. If we look over in our uh, markup over here, we've got this path with the uh, very creative ID of path applied to it. So now if we run this, we should see how easy it is to make that rect animate perfectly along that path. But you don't have to have an SVG element um, to use it as a, a motion path. You can paste in raw SVG path data. That's the same data as that path. And if I just run this, then you'll see that it works identically. So paste in whatever you want. Um, I think it's probably gonna be useful for most people to just have an SVG sitting in the DOM that they can point things to. But let's say that we want it to be centered. Uh, right now it's got the top left corner sitting on there. So let us just run this code here, which is essentially telling it to, to use an X percent and Y percent, which is, you know, of negative 50, which basically says translate the element on the X axis by half of its width, and then on the Y axis by half of its height. And then the transform origin is for rotation, which we'll talk about in a moment. But if I run this now, you'll see that it is perfectly centered on that path. Beautiful. So what if we want to rotate it? Okay, no problem. Just like many things in, uh, in GSAP, if you need an advanced value, you just use an object and we'll say path. Actually, let's clean this up a little bit. Okay, so path pointing to the path element and then we'll just say auto rotate of true. And we run this, we should see that, yes indeed, it rotates it uh, according to the curvature of the path at that point, constantly updating it as it goes. What if we want to have it only animate from, let's say 25% into the path and then end at you know 75%? Well, all we gotta do is say start and feed in a decimal. So let's say 25, 0.25 for 25% and an end of 0.75. And if we run this, yes indeed, it takes the five seconds to just animate between those two points perfectly. You can even go past the end. You can say 1.5. So what that'll do is it'll kind of wrap it around. So it starts at 0.25, goes all the way back around, comes to the center of the path. All right, beautiful. What if you don't have the, uh, the exact path that you want? Let's say you want to tweak something. Well, we have this motion path helper uh, available to Club Greensock members. And all we have to do here is call motionpathhelper.create. Of course, we loaded that file as well. And we point it to the element that we want to animate. And in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to see that there's already an animation, a motion path animation of that element. We don't have to have an animation already, but in this case, we do have one. And when I run this, check it out, we get this editable path where we can literally grab these points and move them wherever we want. And we can, you know, add points, we can, you know, uh, we can alt click to add a path. Um, we can do all sorts of crazy uh, editing of the path. And then when we're done, notice there's this copy motion path button at the bottom. I just click that and it's in the clipboard. Um, it's also logged out in the console so that then I can come back up here and I can just literally paste that right in here. This SVG data, data is from the path that we just edited live in the browser. So if I uh, disable this and we go back to our normal tween, we'll see that it is indeed going to animate it using the uh, SVG data that we pasted in here. So very easy to get exactly the effect that you want 
by using Motion Path Helper. You don't have to keep bouncing back and forth between Illustrator or Inkscape in the browser and tweaking and tweaking and tweaking. Just do it live in the browser. What if you want to animate, let's say this div over here, which by the way, if I resize this, uh, you'll notice that that div is completely outside of the, you know, it uses a different coordinate space than the SVG. So if I show you in the markup here, you know, outside of the SVG, we just have this div sitting here. That's this purple div here. And what if we want to animate that along this path, but it's in a completely different coordinate space? Uh, well, so what is going to happen here is that it's not going to snap directly to this path visually because what it's doing is it's taking the data from this SVG path. And if we look at this, a lot of it looks like gibberish to a lot of people, but this first coordinate is the X coordinate where, where this path is starting. So it's starting at nine and the Y coordinate is a hundred. And by default, the motion path plugin will use X and Y transform. So translate X and translate Y. And so that explains why when we run this again, you know, normally this div is sitting over here. In fact, let's uh, to visualize this better, let's put a little delay on this of two seconds, just so that we can see it do the jump. So if I run this, we'll just see it sit there for a second, and then it does this jump down. So it jumped over by nine and down by a hundred, according to the path that we fed into it. So it's doing what it's supposed to, but if we want it to align with this SVG element itself, then we can use the align special property and we'll just say align it with the path and if we run this again it will change all of the coordinates such that there you go it animates it, it uh, translated between all the different you know the two different coordinate systems so that it lines it up perfectly and uh, this isn't a live effect it doesn't like constantly update it so that if I you know moved the or resize the browser um, the SVG is kind of moving out from underneath it. And so again, it's not a live effect. Uh, that would be pretty processor intensive to do that. But what it does is when it first creates the animation or renders for the first time, it will figure out all of that, the translation of the coordinate systems to line it all up. Um, so you, you don't have to align things with uh, the path itself. You could align it with itself actually. And what this does is, it is it's almost like moving the path so that it starts right on top of the element, wherever the element normally sits in the DOM, so that there isn't any jump. Let's remove this delay. Um, okay, so we can do this. It might make it a little more obvious if we do this on the rect instead of the div. So we know it starts here, and notice that it's it's not jumping anywhere. It's just, again, almost as if it moved this path to be right on top of the element. We can also, let's go back to the div and then we'll align it with the rect. And it's kind of cool, let's do a, an immediate render so that it jumps uh, right away to that alignment point and we'll delay the actual animation uh, for two seconds just so that we can see this effect. So the div starts out here in the DOM normally Look, it moved over right on top of the uh, the rect element and then animated from there. So this aligning can be really, really useful. And lastly, what I want to show you is maybe we don't have anything SVG. Maybe we're animating uh, canvas and we just have coordinates that we want to draw like a nice curve through. Not even draw, but you know we want to animate the element through those points. So in this case, um, I, I already have some circles set up and I'll just color them here so that you can see them. If I run this, we'll see that there are um, some dots that show up here. So this one is uh, corresponds with these coordinates. So it's 100 X and, and Y of 100. And then this dot over here is an X of 300 and a Y of 20. So you notice that there's this nice curved motion that happens through those points. So it starts out wherever the rect element normally is, and then it plots 
a curve through those points that you provide. And there can be as many points as you want in this array. So again, it's not just for SVG. In fact, this is really useful. We can say motion path helper. If we run this, then we should see that that path actually becomes editable. And, you know, we can move this around. And then, you know, again, we can copy the motion path and put it in here if we want. But let's say you want that line to be, you know, maybe not as curvy or more curvy or something. Well, that's no problem. We can just enter the uh, curviness factor. And in this case, uh, the default is one. If we say zero, then we're going to see that there, there's no curvature whatsoever to the line. And if we say maybe a, a curviness of two, then it's an even more exaggerated curviness um, through this, uh, the points that you provide. So again, you don't have to feed in SVG data or strings. It doesn't have to be cubic Bezier's. You can literally just feed in coordinates and it will do all of the work for you. So crazy simple. Hopefully this is useful. Enjoy and tween responsibly.